Chess friends, hello and welcome back. It's a new day. Let's find someone to play. We're playing Zoflow21 from the US. A bit of an unconventional opening. I uh, don't see pawn f4 very often. Um, kind of interesting. Maybe queen's pawn is the play here. <clears throat> Not quite sure how to respond to this. I'll be honest. Hmm. Uh, Zoflo is really making me think here. <laughs> birds opening. I think it's the first time I've seen the birds opening. So how do we attack this? Maybe we just push e6, bishop d6, and try to go for like an early attack on this or something. Hmm. I don't know, maybe just controlling the center or something is the play. No, oh, well that probably wasn't the idea at this point, but that's okay. Didn't really pay attention to his last move there. E3. Mm, it's okay. Maybe I'll just go for the really early castle or something like that. I really have no idea what this opening's all about, so... It's all very strange to me. Hmm. Could always attack his knight on c3 there. He has a very exposed diagonal to his king, but I just kind of have to keep in mind that the knight is protecting h4 there. I'll just go for the castle. No reason not to, I imagine. Mm, okay. So attacking the knight's not really a viable option on b4 anymore. Mm, let's think about this. Maybe I can open up the center. He, he only has two attackers on e5. Maybe if I just add one more attacker, like with the queen or something. I can try to go for like an early e5 push or something. He still hasn't castled, so... Maybe I just add an attacker to e5 with the knight. Hmm. I'll just develop a bishop. Probably worth trying to kick his bishop on b5 there before initiating this attack. At the very least, it'll force him back one way or the other. Is this a viable opening for white? What do you guys think? Maybe you guys can let me know. The bird's opening? Something to be concerned about? Should I care about this? Should I just not pay attention to it at all? If he falls back to a4, I'm okay with that. I'll just go e5 and try to get some center control. I think once I open up this diagonal to with e5, if for some reason he doesn't trade off knights, which he would almost be forced to, there's always this idea to pin his queen as well. He hasn't castled, so I have to remember that it's a really good time to push down the center. I know we're only on move 8, but still.
And now the opponent thinks. Thinking and thinking and thinking. Let's think about what his best move here would be. His best move is probably bishop d3, right? a4 seems a little bit too passive, and then he's more or less blocked in. Yeah, okay, so that did seem like the place. I'm going to go ahead and just push e5. He does have the option of pushing this pawn forward, but he's almost sort of forced to take. If he doesn't take, I have the fork on the bishop and the knight here the next move. I need to remember his bishop on b2 here the whole game. Um, I've been a victim to a lot of surprise attacks with this bishop uh, over the course of my games. It always gets me. I always forget it's just sitting there silently in the corner. So I, I just I can't forget that threat. I know it doesn't really matter right now, but I'm just verbalizing that so I don't forget it later. I think e5 was a good move. I like e5. At some point, I want to play h6 as well. Um, if I go for the pin on his knight on g4, he'll probably push g3, and then I'll be forced to fall back. Um, but I would like the option of being able to tuck the bishop in on h7 at some point, if needed. For example, if he ever brings his knight out to h4, I don't want my bishop to be stuck here on g6. I'd prefer to have it uh, be able to run away. So just kind of doing some forward thinking here. Looks like the opponent's really using a lot of his time to make some moves. Uh, we're only on move 9, and he's burned about 5 minutes. And let's see, he burned 2 minutes on that. Two minutes on that last move, so hopefully this is not a win on time game or the opponent has bad internet game and abandons. Um, I always think it's kind of lame to post a video where the opponent abandons the game for one reason or another. I think the last game that I posted, uh, the opponent just abandoned without playing the whole game through. And even though that game went on for, what was it, like 20 moves or something? Still kind of lame. Okay, so now we can trade knights off. Yeah, so that, that pawn move was really good. Uh, I'm in a much better position here. He's got an attack on the pawn on d5. That's protected by my f6 knight. So he'll almost be forced to take here. I have an attack on his bishop. Um... He does have an annoying move to g5. And then he'll have uh, two attackers on h7, which can get annoying. If he does go g5 with the knight, I'll, um, I'll take his d3 bishop just to make sure he doesn't have two attackers on h7. Also, if for some reason he doesn't move his bishop and decides to go here, um, the knight's also protecting as well on h7. Uh, I would just need to keep in mind that if I go h7 with the knight, I am losing a defender on d5, so that would be a hanging pawn. 
So at some point it probably does make sense to um, either push the pawn up to c6 uh, to be able to defend d5. The only downside to pushing c6 here is that I do block in my light square bishop. Um, so I'm probably going to want to find a place where I can get this bishop uh, sort of not blocked behind a pawn wall and a bit more active somewhere. So we're on move 10 and the opponents used about half of their time. So uh, I'm not exactly the time management uh, king here or the most effective at time management, but I'm just I'm willing to say that taking five minutes for two early moves is probably not the play. <clears throat> yeah, so this is an interesting position. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting him to do that. And let's think about this. I would like to trade off, but I like my knight defending h7. So I don't want to trade this off so early. I'd almost rather... Let's, let's think about this. I think just taking the bishop is better here. Let's think about this. So takes, then he's got two attackers on the knight. So if I take, he has, let me, let me think this one through. If I take, he'll be forced to recapture, right? And at this moment, he has Essentially two attackers on this knight. I only have one defender. Let me think about this move. I'm trying to think of like what's the bigger threat. H7 or this move here. Yeah, what is the bigger threat here? I guess if he does take f6, I can always defend with the queen, but then he will have eyes here, right? Hmm. Bit of a conundrum. Well, actually, this is check two, so he's forced to take this. Um, and then I can just take the knight back. So maybe crisis averted. He'll take with the queen. I'll be shocked if he doesn't recapture this. Speaking of time management, I just burned <laughs> two minutes of time. <laughs> Okay, so I almost have to just take this, right? wonder if it's worth it to pressure his queen. Hmm. Don't believe I have any nice tactics at the moment. I'll just, I'll just play the simple move. Try to get some time, not burn too much time on this. Um, that's just a recapture, so. Or a trade. I don't know if recapture or trade is terminologically correct. Probably just trade. Well, no, I still think on d5 he won the trade because he got a pawn, so. <clears throat> okay, so obviously we have to pressure this.
I'm trying to think of what the more slick way to do it is. With the pawn push or the bishop? I like the idea of moving the queen. Hmm. He does have one really sneaky move. I'm slightly concerned about him going d5 if I go c6. I need to keep g5 in mind. Where else can he really go? I do need to protect uh, b7 as well. I need to get my time management under control too. I'm kind of starting to spend a lot of time uh, on my moves. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. So he's just setting up uh, this attack here. So I believe, let's see, there's two ways about going this. Going up about going this, going about this. <laughs> um, we can either try to find another defender for g7, or and I don't think that's possible because none of my pieces can really protect g7. I believe we're just forced to do a pawn push at this point. Okay. Um, I'm going to opt to stack his pawns here. And then I want to attack his queen as well. I guess that's no, not, so, not so much stacking his pawns as it is just creating a little pawn island for him. So we have two options here. We can either attack with the bishop or push the pawn. We can, yeah, move the bishop over here to e5, or we can push the pawn to c5. I sort of like e5 better because then I can take his bishop and force his king out to b2 as well. Just see if there's any free stuff on the board. And then um, obviously the queen trade is just free. Yeah, I'll play that. Um, I was playing a game with a viewer on the stream two nights ago. Uh, it was a five minute blitz game. And I kind of ended up in a, a similar position here where there was this idea to uh, essentially attack the queen with a bishop that was protected. It opened up the queen trade, but if the opponent were to take the queen, there was this idea to trade the bishop, deliver check, and then do the trade. So it's this, this position is kind of bringing me back um, to that game. And during that game, I was really confused about what to do and sort of like where to put the bishop in order to kind of start that exchange. Um, and it really, made, it really made me like stop and think about how that trade worked. Um, so I think that game is kind of helping me out think in this game, um, if that makes sense. That'd be pretty slick if this was just a win on time game. That'd be kind of funny. I know he's up a pawn, um, but I think there may just be a chance to win on time here. Eh, who knows? We'll see, right?
the bird's opening. I'll need to look that up after this game. I'm really curious now. What was the first move there? Pawn f4. That just may have been the first time I've seen anyone play pawn f4 as white. Very unique opening. Okay. So it looks like he'll be going for um, this uh, rook g1 idea here. So I'll just go ahead and trade the bishop off. I'm not too concerned about him putting the rook here. I can just always add my own rook um, onto the mix. And then the diagonal is open here, so I need to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, the pawn's on the way. He'll, he'll go rook uh, g1 next move, so we'll have to figure that out. Now, uh, there's a couple ideas here. I mean, I can either push the pawn or I can just add a defender uh, to f7. I can also go this way as well. Um, you know, I kind of like... Let's see. Or no, 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 no. Never mind, never mind. I can't do that. Oh, yeah, here's what I do like. I kind of like going e7 with the queen. He'll go g1. Um, then I can do uh, check on e5. He'll be forced back, I imagine, to probably b1. But there's a very small chance that he can go c1. I don't think he'll do that. And then a1 would just be check. So I'll just add the defender with the queen. I'd like to keep the rooks connected if possible. I think that's why rook f7 is not really the play. He, ha he also has uh, pawn f4 as an idea to prevent this check. I think that wouldn't be the, the worst move from him. I kind of hope this doesn't get into the end game, to tell you the truth, because I feel like he would win with the pawn race. If I go e5, okay, so I was not expecting that, I'll be honest. Looks like he's just trying to break my uh, pawns here. I'm really hoping he just goes c1. Okay, so he didn't do it. Okay, that's fine. So now we have to um, figure something else out. Um, I could always pressure the queen. That's an idea. Uh, I need to get my rooks out into the mix too. Oops, it's kind of a misclick. I guess I'm pressuring the queen. <laughs> gonna have to go somewhere he may go something like g5 or fall back maybe to g2 a lot of ideas here I'm trying to force his queen around. Um, he spent a lot of moves just moving his queen around uh, sort of the the board, really. Um, what was the furthest he got? It was like the fifth rank, I believe. So let's see how many queen moves he's made. He's made one, two, three, four, five. Five queen moves already out of the 20 moves. Um, so that's quite a bit.
Yeah, he'll probably go g5 or g2, I imagine. He definitely played the right move with this king, b1. <clears throat> there was a really small chance he could have played c1, but um, Zoflo seems like a pretty decent player, so he he uh, he obviously avoided that. If I can just critique Zoflo's play respectfully, I'd say he's just taking a lot of times, or he's taking a lot of time for his moves. Part of me wants to just stop this pawn from advancing too. Um, let's see. Another part of me wants to sort of just play fast. I kind of want to just move this pawn up. Or do I want to? He does have a lot of threats. <clears throat> I'll just stop his pawn advancement, whatever. Um, honestly, I think this game is just going to be one on time. He's taking a lot of time to make moves. So. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. I want to keep my queen on the king side of the board. I know he'll probably push e4 next, um, which would be a little bit of a bummer, but I'll probably just trade that pawn off if he does end up doing that. I also want to keep this diagonal with my queen too. <clears throat> Okay, I'm not too concerned about that yet. Uh, I have two defenders there. He'll probably move his queen. Hmm. Part of me wants to just move the king as well. I think it's time for the rooks to start defending. <coughs> Over here, excuse me. I could always move a pawn up as well. No, but that wouldn't be very good. I can move a pawn up. He only has one attacker. If he puts his queen out, um, I can always move my king up as well. Or move my king, say, over to, like, f7. I think I'll just do that. Um... We'll just see how it goes. Uh, I'll be shocked if he doesn't play f3 here. Yeah, so kind of figured that. The problem here is that he has to burn two moves to stack his rooks if he really wants to get this attack going. Um, and I can always just uh, go uh, g8, f7 with the king to add another defender to g6. So He's making pretty good moves, I feel like. Uh, I feel like he's playing well, he's just playing slow. Yeah, okay, so this is where he's going to start doing this. I imagine he'll go here. Um, 
I can always just run away. Yeah, his big problem here is that he has to um, he has to push with his queen first. And uh, if he does launch his queen at me, I can always just launch a rook. So. Yeah, so I kind of kind of saw that coming. Um, yeah, so if he takes with his queen, I want to just take with the rook first. So. Then I'm not too concerned if he recaptures the rook with the rook. I can just move my queen out of harm's way. I think I'm on the right idea here. I've never seen someone want to open up the G file so violently. <laughs> this is quite the battery. Okay. Ah, I see what he's doing. Okay, so he wants to get this idea going. So he, he wants to... Um, Oh, let's see, but one, two, one, two. Mm, so it's a bit of a fork. I'm just going to protect this pawn. He's really low on time, so he's going to have to play very fast. Even though we're playing 10 sec or Minkum, this is going to be really difficult for him. Yeah, usually I'm the lose on time guy. Um, I think I'm okay. Hmm. I don't want to lose a defender to this square. Hmm, that is the one problem here. Do I want to offer the the trade? Uh, I'll just make him think. I have to make sure that I don't get back ranked here. I don't think I can get back ranked because, yeah, so this is okay, I think. Mm, okay. So I do have an option of like trying to go for all of his pawns here. I wonder if I keep my king kind of close to these pawns or if I try to just start gobbling up his pawns. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Really interesting game. He is up two pawns, so... I just think he has to make his rook way more active here. I'm sure. So he's not really attacking anything yet. Uh, I'll go for his uh, his pawn here. I think he has to get his king involved. Hopefully he goes for the check. Yeah, okay, so he got his king involved. <clears throat> I need to get my rook involved as well, but... I imagine he can just launch his pawns down the board and probably just win. I also do have like this idea as well. Okay, so I'll be going for the pawn. So I'd like to do some damage here. Um, I can protect this pawn.
Yeah, so he'll be going for these. And how do I win this? Looks like he'll be going for um, the check on my king. Yeah, I have to start, I have to start doing something to him. Protect G2 there. Maybe I just try to get my rook out to here. It's about my only ideas, like e2 and get the rook out onto d2. I think he'll probably go g2. Yeah, I kind of figured that. I'll attack. Uh, he'll probably go g5. Yeah, I figured that. I wonder if just going for the draw here is the play. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have a really hard time winning. Okay. Oh, this is bad. He can check. Oh, this is really bad. This is really bad. I really hope he doesn't see e5. I, I really should have just taken with uh, the rook there. Yeah, that's really bad. That's GG. Oh, that was just really bad. Oh, and then I could have taken the pawn as well. Oh, yeah. Nice GG. Honestly, I'll probably just give him the win. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was my biggest mistake there. Uh, bit of a bummer, but I'll attack his rook. I know he can get a queen out of this, but ah, uh, he can still push that. Yeah, GG, GG by my opponent. Yeah, that was that was a really big blunder there. Uh, that was a, a really big blunder. Uh, he can just freely push this pawn. I'll attack the rook. Yeah, GG. Man, kind of a bummer. Yeah, I was really having a hard time finding an advantage in the end game. Uh, so he just played really well. Yeah, GG. Yeah, GG, what can you do? Bummer. Bummer. Yeah, he played well. He played well. Play for stalemate, I guess. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, man, I was so confident that I was just going to win on time there. Oh, and then he just turned on his super brain in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, GG Zoflo. That was a that was a good game, man. I really thought I had a chance there. But um yeah, let me just go back to the big mistake here. <sighs> yeah, I really just failed to notice this. I know it wouldn't have swung the game. Um, it looks like he just had a really big advantage here. Plus 
Hmm. Bummer. Bummer. Yeah, this was a this was a really big mistake here. I kind of failed to notice that he would have the check there. Um and then I for some reason didn't even take the pawn. I decided to go backwards, which is kind of weird. I I should have taken more time in the moves in the end game there. Yeah, he played really well. Oh, there's a brilliant move here. 84.6. Yeah. So he was using all of his time, but he was playing really good moves. And I probably could have thought about the moves a little bit better on my part. Looks like he had a brilliant move in the opening, so... Um, let's see this. Bird's opening is an offbeat opening which starts with f4 creating weaknesses for white, but quickly trying to attack the center and black's king. Interesting. Um, oh, by the way, I think what I'm going to start doing with the game reviews is just kind of looking at the key positions and seeing where the advantage was either lost or gained instead of going ev over every single move. Um, I think that will just kind of create a like a little faster pace for the reviews. I don't want to spend forever on these. So e5 was a mistake. I'm losing a pawn this way. Hmm, interesting. So I, hmm, that's too bad. I thought e5 was a, a good attack on the center. Looks like what I failed to realize was that I was going to lose the d pawn, right? Yeah, so this move really made me stop and think. Um, the big idea here was, do we recapture with the knight, or do we take his bishop that was an active threat here? So capturing while sacrificing with the knight was the right idea. This wins a pawn. <clears throat> Looks like the engine wanted to in his knight to pre prevent the capture here. Let me just play this position out a little bit. Let me play out the line where I do recapture here. So then, yeah, he can take my knight, right? Then I can take his knight. And then obviously he just takes with his rook. And then what could I have played? Uh, and then I could have gotten the queen out. Interesting. Hmm. Let's go back. So let's let's play out the line where we pin his knight and he takes the knight. Okay. Yeah, so this was kind of what I was thinking in my head. Maybe I wasn't verbalizing it very well, but what I saw happening was that if he were to take this knight, um, I'd kind of be forced to take with the queen. But at that point, this square, uh, e5, probably would have been opened up. That's how I saw the calculation going in my head. Maybe that wasn't the right way to look at it. But this pin at least stops this. Um, and then we can do something like this. And now the, um, the knight is still protected here. So this would have been essentially an even position here still. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like the game kind of fell apart for me after this one really good move. Hmm. Yeah, nice work, Zoflo. Really made me think there. So pawn f6 definitely was the play there, yeah. The dreaded down button. <laughs> it always gets me. Looks like attacking with the bishop was the right idea here. Oh, and this was so bad, huh? Hmm. Bummer. This move might cause trouble for you. Engine, you are absolutely right. It did cause trouble for me. <laughs> I like how the I like how the engine engine's trying to be as nice as possible. <laughs> so pushing the pawn, interesting. 
recaptures. Man, he just has such a big advantage here. Pushing the queen up. I figured e7 was just adding a defender to g7. That was the idea. Because I figured if I went d6, this was going to be his next move, and then I just had to protect g7, which I imagine I could have done with the rook, like the engine suggests, but queen g3. Interesting. I don't think he would have played queen g3. But... Hmm. Okay, so check was an okay move there. Then attacking his queen was an okay move. This was bad. I just wanted to prevent his pawn push, but looks like there was something a bit more threatening here in the meantime, huh? A5. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe at a high level, I should have been thinking about opening up his king side with the pawns a bit more. Hmm. He was just being so aggressive down this G file that I felt like I had to play defensively. Good move. This is a bad move, huh? A5. And the engine really wants A5. Hmm. Let's think about why the engine wants A5 so bad. Maybe the idea is to trade off pawns, get the rook out, and then open up the B file potentially for more threats. So that's a mistake. How could I have punished that? So move the king off over to the side. Okay. I was debating honestly between h7, g7, and f7. So. I didn't really want to go h7 because I felt like I was going to get my king kind of stuck in this corner, and I didn't really want to get the king stuck in this corner without much protection. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad way of looking at it, but looks like we were both playing um, not so great moves here. Let's go back to the review uh, remarks. This brings defense to your attacked pawn. Right. Right on target. Man, so he was just he just found the best move here, huh? Hmm. Ah, right. Duh. Protect the pawn with the pawn. Right. That's kind of silly. Ah, and this could have prevented the check as well. Bit of an oversight for me. Protect the pawn with the pawn. That would have made too much sense. Yeah, okay. So, definitely a blunder from me here. This was kind of the beginning of the end for me here. See, I didn't want to move the king away because uh, I wanted to leave just one more defender for g6 because I figured he was attacking the queen here so this would have been a bit forcing you know or would ha would it have been no because I have two defenders here so just out of curiosity ah right so I would have won that exchange I miscalculated that bit of a bummer this pawn push, yeah, I'm really salty about that move. <laughs> I'm being honest. Hmm. Maybe moving back to f7 was the play. Oh, it looks like the engine wants recapture. Hmm. Why is f7 a bad move here? Seems like f7 would have been okay. Hmm. I think I was on the right idea here in the end game, just kind of noticing that his queen, or excuse me, his king was really inactive. 
and there was a possibility to start gobbling up his pawns. Hmm. Yeah, this just protects the pawn. This protects the pawn. So I kind of spotted that he was going to go for the check there. Was this really so bad? No way. D8. Looks like I played D8 just one move too late. Yeah, really solid move there. Really, so the engine likes this move. This is excellent. I thought this was like the worst move that I played. I thought this just loses a rook. So just out of curiosity. Okay, so he takes the past, well not past pawn, he just takes the pawn. Okay. B6. Hmm. So it seems like in this position my king and his rook on the opposite on his side of the board is just too weak. Hmm. Couldn't I have just taken a pawn here? H7, so he attacks a pawn. And then I can take a pawn. He takes a pawn. So really he's just only up one pawn here. I can centralize my king, he takes a pawn. Hmm, interesting. Let's just look at the rest of the moves here. Yeah, I felt like this was the weakest move that I made the whole game. E3. Yeah, this is just this was just a bad move. E3 and F2 were just bad moves. Yeah. No need to leave comments about this move. I know what I did. <laughs> yeah, I lost a rook, which is a really big bummer. So. This is so bad too. Oh, I could have attacked his king a different, or uh, excuse me, his rook in a slightly different way. Yeah, GG, GG. <laughs> yeah, nice play by Zoflo, man. Really good game. He played well. He played really well. Um, yeah, boy, that brilliant knight move really forced me to think and miscalculate. And then what else was there? There was the queen checkmate, which I didn't handle the best. And then not defending... I, I'm not, not defending the pawn with another pawn, I think was just kind of the silliest mistake. Um, and defending it with the rook instead was just a really big blunder. And then capturing e3 with the king and leaving the rook to hang was also a really big mistake. Um, let me see if he... Yeah, so he didn't have any misses. I had two mistakes. He played like a 1400. I played like a 1250. So yeah, good game. He had really good accuracy. Um, I had decent accuracy, obviously not my best, but yeah, he just maintained an advantage this whole entire game and just kept it. So good game, Zoflo. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you guys tomorrow.